Hey, how about another round of applause for our VR, VR panel? Pretty great, right? And I just want to take a moment to thank the, the staff of the summit, because this has been one hell of a panel. Can we get a round of applause for them? We've had VR, eSports, I mean, the best and the brightest minds on stage. And I'm really excited now. I'm, I'm about to kind of fanboy out a little bit. How many of you have played Monument Valley? Right? This is a beautiful game, an achingly beautiful yeah, You can put your hand down. You don't have to keep it up. I'm, I like the game a lot too, man, but you can, you, can bring your you can bring your arm down. It's distracting, honestly. No, really, bring it down. I'm just kidding. He, okay, he put it down. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to introduce Dan Gray from Us Two Games. Monument Valley 2 um, is really, really special and conveying the growing relationship between mother and child in an accessible, digestible, and fun form is, is really an intriguing challenge. And to, to discuss how this all happened and to take you on his journey, I'm excited to bring to the stage Dan Gray. Round of applause for Dan. Thanks. Right. Let's talk about beauty and relationships as a little bit of a tangent this afternoon. So my name's Dan Gray, and I'm head of studio for Us Two Games, who are a small uh, game studio in Oval in South London. And what I want to talk to you about today is how we express this beauty in a variety of different ways within the game. Um, Us Two Games is part of a wider group of studios called Us Two, um, who predominantly look after design and development work and digital products for clients and start new businesses. And games was one of those. Um, Monument Valley 1 came out in 2014, and we're immensely proud of what happened there. We were lucky enough to win numerous awards, win Apple Game of the Year, some BAFTAs, and then thankfully start work on a sequel for this, where we wanted to kind of experiment with this relationship between mother and child and really push the boat out in regards to how we make you feel something with as little as possible. So what I'm actually going to start doing is uh, talk a little bit about why this relationship um, is something that we chose to do. Why is it that parenthood was something that was important to us? And I think that's pretty much because a lot of the team changed at that moment in time. I'm going to move on from the reasons why, go on to how this manifests itself into the visuals, and then finally, on to the mechanics and the audio design around the game. And then my personal favorite, which is, how does this work in regards to how we work with each other? A lot of stuff like this is usually quite product focused. And I want to delve into how we as developers work each other in the same way that we actually make something. So for those who aren't aware of what Monument Valley is and you've sat down, I just want to show you a quick trailer of Monument Valley 2. And this is really good timing, because the game finally came out on Android of Monday of this week. Came out on iOS in June. I'm really, really happy with the response so far. We took a massive risk with focusing on relationships and love and a nurturing nature. nature and it's really good that so many people have responded well. So I guess the question is, again, like why focus on motherhood? And 
as I said, the team changed a lot in 2014. That's three years difference. We were all roughly kind of like mid-20s to mid-30s, gone through a lot together in terms of spending, you know, 10, 12 hour days together making something we love. And a few members of the team had had children at that moment in time. Um, so we'd had some personal journeys and wanted to tell stories about things that felt personal to us, as well as we sit down once a week as a team and we say, what storylines or themes do we feel are underrepresented within video games? You know, we come to a lot of conferences and talk, and usually the relationship of a mother and a child is just not a common one. Usually mothers are not present in video games whatsoever, and when, even if they are, they're then seen as something that is vulnerable or something to protect, some kind of escort mission, if you will. So we wanted a character that was really going to convey a feeling of power over this world. She's one of the original architects. She builds all that stuff that you just saw in that trailer. Really wanted to kind of focus down on this. And um, this is a picture of Atlas, who is David, our art director's son, uh, chilling in our studio, giving his uh, young Spanish feedback on what some of the level designs look like. And it was really important for us to you know, be a very family-focused studio, have people's kids in the studio with us, um, have that feeling between us, really kind of like contribute to this. And we're really glad that now we've managed to make a game about this mother and child and how their relationship grows and how we managed to tell quite a complicated and long story and something that's probably going to take you about 90 minutes, two hours to finish, depending on your level of experience. So nextly, how does this work in relation to the visuals itself? The visuals are a massive part of Monument Valley. And when I talk about each one of these verticals, from you know, the ways we work, to the visuals, to the game design, to the audio, we really have an emphasis on you trying to feel something from every single element of those. So we want you to look at a screenshot like this and feel something, to remember it in some way. We put a lot of effort into having every single screen of Monument Valley be bespoke be designed with a specific intention in mind. We reuse very little with the game. And you know the same emphasis that we sat down in 2013 and wrote down, which was, we want to make a game that's so beautiful you can take any screenshot and hang it on your wall as a piece of art, is as evident in Monument Valley 2 as it is in Monument Valley 1. Um, I mean, this level in particular is one of the ones where the mother and child get split up for the first time. Um, we really want you to feel that kind of like sense of uh, mysticism and emotion as the two characters get split up and have to solve puzzles apart from each other. And one of the big important parts of that was how do we design the characters? Like we had Ida and the Totem in Monument Valley 1, and how do we really make you feel something with the character designs and the silhouettes that we use? It's really, really hard to try and convey an emotion with a character that sits tiny, tiny, tiny on this small device you keep in your pocket. And we went through maybe 200 different characters including some stuff that we really wanted to do. You can see some of the characters in the middle there with these huge pieces of architecture floating above their heads. I wish we could do stuff like that, but it's just not readable on a small device. Even some of the stuff on the left-hand side, you can see the mother and child. It's really important to make the mother feel sturdy, trustworthy, the responsible one, and that needs to be read from the silhouette of the characters, uh, and also the basic sense of animation that we have between the two. So these are the actual two characters that we ended up with, which are, you know, they should be easily identifiable from both of them. Actually, this guy's my favorite guy. The guy with the beard we never actually used, but hopefully when we come back, we will do. So yeah, so these are the two characters that we ended up with. Um, again, it was really important for us to allow people to project their own interpretation onto those characters as well. So you'll see their faces are literal blank canvases. Um, we try and convey the emotion with the levels and the architecture and the music as opposed to necessarily, you know, an animated face and walls of text and that form of narrative storytelling. So yeah, these are two characters we ended up with and there's the mother and the child. The child actually um, wasn't supposed to have any kind of defined gender originally, but we were forced into picking a young girl towards the end of development just for language and localization purposes in terms of how we reference the younger character in text. Um, so yeah, the official canon of the world is that this is a mother and her daughter. Then this is one of the boards that we have throughout development. Um, when it comes to visual reference and how we take inspiration for these, we carry these boards around our studio in London. And it's really important that we take inspiration from outside of video games. So we make a massive effort to not be so introverted to the games industry. And I think that's partly to do with the wider kind of studio sense that I mentioned earlier. Us Two Games wasn't born out of a game studio, and I feel that's where 
some of our special sources, if you want to refer to it that way. So this board in particular is for a level called the Archipelago. And it's at a moment in the game that's supposed to be filled of joy and adventure and excitement. So when I talk about not taking inspiration from outside of games, sometimes it goes really left field. So this board in particular, you might pull out some references to uh, drag queens, uh, candy bars, and Nicki Minaj music videos, all contributing towards one level in the game. So it's a really, really varied set of reference. And we carry these boards all the way around. This is some shots of our studio, these huge foam boards. And everybody moves around the studio depending on what they're working on. So these are really kind of like mobile reference. And also, we like to not pigeonhole people. So you'll see Manesh, who's the lead developer for Monument Valley 2. And we don't, programmers aren't just programmers. They're not just the tech person. If you want everybody to feel emotionally engaged with what it is we're making, we expect everybody to be engaged in every level. So the programmers contribute to artistic suggestions and what they feel about the game. We make sure the artists learn how to code as well. And everybody gets involved with level design. So it's a really kind of T-shaped team to try and make everything as cohesive as possible. So more of the boards we look at, um, you'll see this is just a reference to one of our older levels from Monument Valley 1 in the top left. And really taking inspiration from you know, older senses of architecture. We like to say that one of the main characters Monument Valley most people don't realize is the world itself. It's the architecture. That's as much of a character as, as the two that we see. And we look at stuff like the kind of old artist as well for inspiration. And this is a picture of Lauren, who's one of their lead artists on here, um, looking at the archipelago level that we're going to look at in a little bit. And this is pretty much how the game ended up. Um, very, very varied, very, very bespoke. We, you saw the board with Atlas in front of it earlier. That's so that we can ensure that each one of these level surprises will move, take post-its out, move them around if we want to get the color composition right. Again, trying to make you feel something at different points. And this is my personal uh, favorite comparison between how we make you feel something. The level on the left is the archipelago I mentioned. It's the first time in the game that the child is trusted to do something for themselves. So it needs to be filled with joy, excitement, adventure. It's the first time they're given freedom. And you can tell that with the colors that we use and, and how playful each one of the pieces of architecture actually is. And the level on the right is the first time the character is truly left on their own. So the level on the left, the mother is still there. They have this false sense of security that even if things go wrong, the mother is still there with them. The level on the right, things are dark. The character doesn't understand it. Like You'll see some of the architecture in the middle is fractured and broken. The character doesn't understand this world in the same way that they did the first time they were left alone. So there's some really good contrast between how we want you to look at one of these screenshots and take something different just from the aesthetic. And when it comes to another one of these verticals of how we convey the relationship and the emotion, the mechanics is a really important one. Because when it comes to something like movies or television or books, we can do some of this other stuff. But game mechanics are one of the things that are quite specific to what we do. And what I mean by that is how the player interacts with the screen. How do we cause them to perform an action that makes them feel a certain way? And the best way to break that down is actually to go through the different stages of this relationship between the two of them. If you imagine that, um, you know, like we're all kids at some point, right? You're really, really young. You stay attached to your parent. You don't tend to drift too far. And you're highly dependent on them. And then eventually, you start to kind of like want to do things for yourself. You get a little bit more rebellious. You want to try and do something. But you're still scared about being truly on your own. And then eventually, we all get to a point where we want to spread our wings. In real life, that means moving out or going to university or going and doing something else. And th both characters, both the parent and the child, need to rediscover what life is after that. And then eventually, hopefully, you get to a point with your parents where you have the parity and you treat each other as equals. I've only just got to that point at 32 years old with my own father. But yeah, I like to think that we're now friends and we tell each other stuff we wouldn't when our relationship was different. So these all need to be represented in the game itself. So you can see on the left-hand side, um, there's a bit where the character, we want to get that sense of dependency. So there's an avalanche where, where the child gets split up from the mother. And the child constantly keeps running after the mother. She desperately needs her. And we don't really split them apart. Also, in terms of the gameplay, you tap to move, and the child automatically follows. We're not going to overcomplicate how you interact with the game. Then you can see the archipelago level next to it, where it's full of joy. Then you can see uh, the next slide, which is where the characters must go apart. 
And then my favorite bit representation of these game mechanics is a level we call the orchard, which is where we want to elicit a feeling of growth. The child is learning to do things on their own for the first time, and they're learning to kind of spread their wings and discover who they are as an adult. We use these tree structures that the player can interact with and grow and kind of like shrink the character as they see fit to help the character grow and reach these ever kind of taller heights. It's how we cause the player to interact with these to feel a certain way. And then eventually, both characters can be used independently on the same screen to solve things independently or solve things together. The music is a huge part of this as well. Again, it needs to work on its own. I want to play you a music track, and you get a sense of these two characters and how they play off each other. We want to use a steady bed of the audio to make you feel the kind of sturdy dependency of the mother and a playful, joyful kind of melody over the top to give you a sense of the child. So I'm going to show you a really quick clip of some of the audio that we designed very early on in the experience. Actually, I'm going to have to cut it short at that point. Um, so again, we take these things, we write them down, this relationship, the love, the interaction, and we need to make sure it's present in everything that we do as a company whilst working on this project. Um, and a big part of that is the working practices. As I said, people often talk in a very product-focused manner about what your principles are. It would be very strange if I got up here and I talked about how great it is to have a good relationship with your parents, what that means, how loving that is, if that didn't manifest itself in how we treat each other and how we work. So we put a lot of effort into how we work at us two games with each other, giving each other the freedom to take time off if they need to spend time with their kids or their parents. Um, in terms of our maternity, paternity leave, in terms of conflict resolution and training people to get the best out of each other, it's more than just the game that you're going to download on the App Store. It's the it's the internal stuff that none of you guys really get to see. Again, it has to be present in everything. And even for the launch party of Monument Valley 2, we paid to fly out every single team member's parents from all over the world to come and spend time with us for the day so that we can get to understand where they came from and also uh, how we learn more about each other. So on that note, I want to say uh, thanks a lot. And thank you for your time. And if you remember one thing, it's that if you truly believe something, make it present in every single area of what you do. Thanks a lot for your time. <laughs>